Enjoying life over the road, a community that champions adventure, innovation, and well-being. Hello, my name is Cindy Tumstall, and I'm your host. Today, my guest is Andy Prickett. He's a full-time truck driver, but boy, does he have an adventurous spirit. Every chance he gets, he's exploring and discovering great things to see and do when he's traveling. He's got some great tips to share with us, and he's really making the most of this opportunity to travel, and I know you're going to be inspired in the same way that I was. Welcome to the show, Andy. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Well, I saw you on I saw you on um, social media, and I, I I saw a post that you had um, written about a side trip you made to Oregon, and I thought, oh my gosh, this guy's this guy's a true adventurer, and I can't wait to have you on my show. Yeah, that was actually just this morning that that uh, trip happened, and I posted it while I was still sitting there, and uh, then you happened to find me, and here we are. So. I know that was quick, right? I like that. Okay, Absolutely. so tell tell our tell our audience a little bit of your history. So, um, what type of um, truck are you driving, and then what type of freight do you run, just so they could kind of get to know you a little bit before we get into some of your stories? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, I have starting with the truck because I love it. A brand new Kenworth W nine hundred with the big uh, studio sleeper in it and I pull a flatbed with Conestoga kit and I'm currently I started off with this company it's not my truck in the Chicago area and they let me take it to Phoenix Arizona where I am now and uh, next month I'm going to relocate again to Florida just because I can nice love that. Uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've, I've been I've been doing OTR for uh, about a year. This is my 25th year in trucking. I started uh, locally in the Chicago area uh, in construction trucking after I got my CDL. And I did flatbed for 20 years at the same company, all, all construction trucking while my kids were growing up. And then I eventually transitioned over to OTR. Okay, well, tell me about that transition. What made you go over the road? Tell me that story. Well, I had always wanted to do it. I grew up in northern Illinois, and my grandparents had a cabin up in northern Wisconsin, about a seven-hour drive. And ever since I was a little kid, we would take trips up there every summer, sometimes in the winter, just to do maintenance on the cabin because of the snow or whatever. And any time they went, I wanted to go with. I have always had this passion for travel and this wanderlust, even though as, as at such a young age, I didn't realize that's what it was. And on the way up there, I was just in awe of the big trucks. I used to watch this show called BJ and the Bear. I don't know if you remember that. It was about a a truck driver who had a monkey as a pet. And I was just, everything that had to do with trucks. I was the kid that had the the Peterbilt poster on my wall when all the other kids had the Lamborghinis and supercars and stuff. And I've just always been enamored by that world. But when I started, when I got into it, I was having babies and I just didn't want to leave them. And so I stayed local and I never got a chance to do it, even though I always wanted. When my kids got, grew up and moved out of the house, I wanted to travel. And I, I had just reached my 20 year mark at my job. And this was at the very beginning of COVID where they started talking about shelter in place. And I was just going to work and coming home and sitting on my couch and basically doing nothing. And I, it dawned on me, like, I don't have to do this. I had uh, quite a bit of money in my profit sharing for being at this job for so long. And I s- decided uh, kind of spontaneously, um, there was a lot leading up to this. I was kind of fascinated with the whole van life community and just alternative lifestyles, you know, not having rent or a mortgage and just being able to travel and do whatever you wanted. And it dawned on me one day, I can do that. I'm in a position finally where I can, I can jump on my passions and my, these dreams that I've had for so long. So I quit my job and I sold everything I owned and I bought a van. I made it into a camper. I bought a trailer for my Harley and I just took off with no plan. I was debt free and I just traveled. I bought a national park pass. I went to 16 different States. I think I went to 11 or 12 national parks and I just did a lot of camping and a lot of landscape photography and really kind of honed in on those passions of mine. So fun. Well, as you know, travel is expensive. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I, eventually, I eventually started to run out of money. Yeah. And I thought, well, I kind of need to go back to work. I need to make some money. I need to do something. I thought about starting different businesses. But at this point, I'm like, well, I don't have enough money left to do that. So 
you know, I at the, and I, also at this point, I thought I was done with trucking. Yeah. Uh, I, I had kind of lost my desire to do it, but I had never done over the road. And it, so at that point, I'm like, well, what can I do that I can continue to do this traveling but make money? So uh, that was just last month. year that you did that? You made that change last year? This is recent. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, very, nice. yeah, very recent. 20, 2021. Nice. So I decided to go back to trucking. I got a job with a, a company doing dry van stuff, and I didn't like it. Uh, I actually quit. I did it, for a few, did it for a few months, and then I quit for a while and went back to the van. I was like, I can't do this. This work and stuff is... For, I didn't. I just didn't want to work anymore. Um, <laughs> and then, and then I, I came to my senses. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta do something. I gotta work and make some more money. So I found this job where I'm at now, out of the Chicago suburbs, and the flatbed thing, which is what I know. It's, it's what I'm comfortable with, and started doing this, and I absolutely love it. And I kind of brought my. Uh, my approach to the industry now and to this job is more how can I make this work for me so that I can continue to travel and have these experiences and still be spontaneous and go to the national parks and incorporate some photography and camping in it and everything else and, and still work and make money at the same time, you know, so this just happened to fall into my lap. This, the guy that I work for is so fantastic. I get access to the load boards and I can pick where I want to reset so I can still control, you know, even though I'm now under time constraints and schedules and have to meet deadlines and appointments and everything else, but I can still pick where I want to go so I can plan my trips and still be spontaneous and still do what I love. Perfect. So you're booking your own freight. They're not booking for you. They do book for me, but um, my dispatcher will call me and say, hey, I found this. Do you want it? And I can tell her, no. Perfect. I'd rather do this. And I, I can send her loads and be like, hey, I want this one. And she'll check into it. And we'll work together as a team. It works very well. Sometimes she'll kind of blindside me side me, and kind of sneak something in on me. Hey, you're going here. <laughs> you know, Why? Like, no, I don't want to go there. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it just pays the bills. So it, it's, you know, whatever pays, they know better than I do. They're, they've been at it longer than me. They know, like, over the Easter holiday, I was in Illinois, and there was just nothing. I wanted to go to Florida and go to the beach, but she, I ended up in uh, where I'm at now, which is the Oregon, Washington area, which ended up being fine. I, I love it out here, too. So, but it paid well. So that's just what we had to do. So. Yeah, yeah. Hard to pass up on those good pain loads. But but no, nothing is forced. So great. Perfect. <laughs> okay, yeah. so I introduced you as a, an adventurer. So I, you, you definitely are that. So tell us a little bit about what you've been able to do since being over the road. Like what are some of the um, side trips that you've made? Or is there some a favorite you could share? Yeah, absolutely. I try to like I said, plan my trips on uh, places that I want to go. And right now I'm out of Phoenix, so I love the western states. I love the national parks. Uh, most recently I went to Zion National Park. I did a reset in St. George, Utah. Uh, some of these places are a little bit more expensive to get rental cars or Ubers. Um, Utah is, southern Utah is certainly one of those. And I understand there's people that are in different phases in life, different financial situations and needs and whatever. But, you know, I've done things that cost a lot of money. I've done things that don't cost hardly any money at all. But I make really good money and I've set my life up to where I can. This, this is the most important thing to me, adventuring and traveling. So, yeah, we did a we got a rental car in, in St. George a few weeks ago and went to Zion National Park. Like I said, I have the pass there and spent a day and a half in the park and did a trail overlooking this amazing canyon. My girlfriend was with me at the time. Fun. I was taking pictures of her. She almost fell over a cliff. Oh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> and we, we lost the trail because it got dark. I didn't think to bring a flashlight, which is stupid of me because I'm not new at this. Right. But uh, we went out there without a flashlight except the one on my phone. My phone battery was almost dead, and we kind of lost the trail. Luckily, there was a guy out there with a headlamp that we found. And he helped us get back to the to the car. Otherwise, we'd have been stuck out there all night. But you know, crazy things like that. I've also done resets in in cities, 
did one in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. I didn't rent a car, but we got an Uber downtown and just wandered around and ended up on the in a rooftop bar on the 14th floor overlooking the city. And, you know, the adventuring outdoor is more my thing, but I'll explore anything. I just love to explore and meet people. I'm very social. I talk to everybody. So fun. Um, so tell yeah, me about so, one of you, um, like, tell me about a trip that you made or a side trip that you made that maybe was a little bit more extravagant, like, you know, not going to do every month. <laughs> just recently I went to, I ended up in Salt Lake City again. Uh, I had been resetting there quite a bit. I didn't really want to be there. I had already, the, the previous trip, I had already been to Salt Lake City and went up into the mountains and stuff, so kind of very spontaneously last minute i looked around i I love the national parks in southern utah like zion and arches and bryce canyon and stuff like that but i was four and a half hours from it so i thought at the last minute to just rent a van since i did the van life thing i dragged my mattress out of the sleeper my bedding everything all that stuff and threw it in this van and drove four hours after driving you know, finishing my 70 hours wow. and driving 11 <laughs> hours that day, packed up this van, you know, got an Uber at the last minute to the car rental place, got this van, drove four and a half hours down to the national parks and spent spent the night there in the desert in a van, <laughs> you know, on my mattress that had been in the sleeper. Um, so and great. Wandered around, wandered around the next day, got breakfast at, you know, this cool little cafe. There's all kinds of little restaurants down there and just spent the day getting lost in the Red Rocks in, in Southern Utah. I love this so much. It's so great. I, you know, I have a website. It's ELOTR.com. I'd love for you to hop on there and share some of these pictures of your trip. You said you do um, photography, too. So um, I'd love for you to share some of those things and um, maybe, you know, share with our audience, like, what, um, you know, what you had to do for truck parking and, you know, what you had to do to some of the adventures. You were able to park there with your truck or you had to rent a car or whatever. It would be great for you to share some of those things on there. Yeah, I would absolutely love to do that. I've been starting to do that on this that Facebook group. You found me on just little tips and tricks and, and um, things, pictures of stuff, places that I've been on the resets and just trying to inspire people to get out of the truck stops because you don't have to be there. Yeah. The website is el otr.com stands for enjoying life over the road. So go check it out, elotr.com. You know, there was one time... We, I, would, I was going through the middle of New Mexico, and I had heard of White Sands National Park, but I didn't know that I was about to drive right past it. And my girlfriend was with me again this time, and, and I was like, that's White Sands National Park. Like, I had no idea. It's right there. Um, so we pulled over. There's a big place to pull over there. And this is just something that I, you know, I had a couple extra hours to kill. I wasn't in a hurry. It wasn't a reset. There's no Ubers down there. It's in the middle of nowhere. But there was a taxi company. So I Googled taxis around me, found this guy to come out. And I'm like, hey, I'm parked outside this national park, but it's too far to kind of walk around in there. Will you come and pick me up and just drive me around the park? Oh, I (laughs) love that. Didn't even blink an eye. Didn't didn't think twice about it. He's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So we. What a great idea! Played. I love that. He just, he just played tour guide, and for maybe twenty five bucks, we um, I already had the national park pass, so it didn't cost anything to get in. And I had him. Oh, stop here! So he stopped, kept the meter running. We went out and run, ran, and played on the sand dunes, and took pictures, and just had a had a ball for a couple hours, and had him bring us back out, drop me back off in the truck, and kept going to my delivery. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And for 25 bucks, I mean, that's a great break. I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Yeah, it's really nothing. So you really just have to be open to the possibilities. You have to be open to creating experiences like that out of nothing. And yeah. you have to be willing to make the stop. You know, even if it's just, if you don't have a lot of money, I totally get that. You know, throw a bike in your truck. Most yeah. people have a bike or have access to one or they're super cheap. Throw it in your truck. Uh, throw some camping gear. That's another thing I want to start doing. It's, we're coming into the warmer months, and I do spend a lot of money, and I kind of need to – I'm aware of that. I kind of need to stop doing that so much. So, you know, throw a backpack together of some ultralight camping gear and get a bike and hit a campground on these resets. Just, I have a hammock. You can string a hammock up and sit next to a lake with a fishing pole and, 
you know, be 10 minutes from a truck stop, but feel like you're on vacation. So, so great. I love it. So great. I love it even how you're driving and you kind of just looking for your next adventure. I mean, even that, just that little subtle shift and, you know, what can I possibly do? You know, I love that. Because even if you couldn't go, like if you couldn't make the trip now, you know, you couldn't make a stop, even kind of making a mental note that you want to go back there. I'm sure you do that a lot as well. Oh, all the time. In fact, the start of this trip, uh, since I'm in Phoenix now, I headed out Route 60 and went through this area called the Salt River Canyon, which I had no idea was even there. I didn't even know it was a truck route. I planned it out, and I'm like, oh, okay, I can take a truck there. I've never been there before. Even just taking new routes, finding different ways uh, to go somewhere, and all of a sudden, here's this amazing canyon that's not a national park. It's not a state park. It's just out there, um, and I, I, it's this gorgeous. I ride a motorcycle, so I made a note of I stopped at some scenic overlooks and took some pictures and made a note that I'm coming back here on my bike. There's campgrounds. It's an amazing twisty road of probably 80 miles or so, and it's this gorgeous canyon with all these scenic overlooks and a river that winds through the bottom of it. Um, just, ha- you know, making those, that's what I mean about don't be afraid to make the stop, even if it's just for a few minutes. Take a couple pictures, make some m- mental notes, and plan a future trip there or something. So when I get back Thursday from this couple-week trip that I've been on, that's exactly where I'm going. Nice. Uh, I'm going to ha- load up the camper, and even though I just get home, <laughs> load up the camper, <laughs> go, out a- go out again, and take the dog and the girlfriend and just go to this Salt River Canyon and explore that. So, so fun. Okay, so tell me I, about the stop that you made, that I, the one that I posted on about Oregon. Tell me about how you found that, and I'm assuming that view that you posted on um, with the pics, and I'll have pics on um, when we share when we air the episode. I'll put them on my YouTube. But tell, how did you find that? Like, how did you even stumble upon that gorgeous view? And I mean, how does that happen? <laughs> well, that one I had already known about. Okay, I had stopped. I had stopped there when I was doing my van life adventure i went through there i had known about it's multnomah falls in oregon i had known about that that's probably one of the better known most photographed waterfalls in oh it's the stunning country, maybe. stunning i mean beautiful it's it's stunning every time i've been there a couple times now first time in the big truck but i knew it was there and i had no idea if you could get in there in a truck but i know it's a huge parking area and i kind of looked some of the people on Facebook said that there are no truck signs, but I didn't see a single one. Yeah. Not approaching it, not coming into it, not in the parking lot. So maybe there used to be, maybe I just didn't see them. Maybe I just didn't want to see them. Right. <laughs> maybe. Uh, <laughs> Probably. Um, but that, I mean, and you, when you park there at Multnomah Falls, it's, it takes less time to walk to that waterfall than it does to walk into a truck stop from a truck stop parking lot. Wow. Wow. Uh, and, and there's a restaurant there. It's not open right now. Uh, I don't. I think it's just a summer thing, but there's a little restaurant there. There's no overnight parking, but you could stop in there, you know, do a little safety check, kick your tires, walk over to there to that, to that waterfall in less than three minutes. Wow. Even hike, hike up to that bridge that's in the picture, which I did, and be there for no, no more than 15 minutes and have some you know, get some incredible pictures and just a short little experience. I mean, that was such a gorgeous, oh. I had the spray from the waterfall hit me in the face and I was just laughing like an idiot and took so some pictures and in, in 15 minutes, you know, so yeah, just so little great. dumb things like that. So great. That you could take advantage of and that was free. Love it. So great. Yeah. I got to put that on my website. I love that so much. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. an amazing spot. That yeah, whole area so through there, that whole Columbia River Gorge, it's 150 miles of absolute spectacular scenery, and you can make a stop at that waterfall. I mean, why wouldn't you? So great. So tell me about some of the other adventures. Where else have you been? I, I do go to Florida quite a bit because I'm, I'm going to relocate there next month, like I said, so I've been resetting there. That's a little more tricky to do because the truck stops are pretty far from the beach. Ubers to the airport to get a car are pretty expensive. The rental cars in Florida are not cheap either. Right. But I have spent a couple times, uh, a few times, where I've gone to the Tampa area, Clearwater Beach and all that, and got a rental car and spent uh, a night on the beach in a hotel. The hotels aren't that expensive there. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and spent a couple of days just sitting on the beach drinking rum and cokes and playing in the ocean and exploring the touristy little beach towns and stuff. So fun. And and it's it's like a vacation, yeah. even though it's just a couple of days. So. Yeah, so great. Yeah, I love the beach, so I'm always like, ah, oh, this is great. I feel like yeah, it really does absolutely. something to my soul. I love being at the beach, so, like, something magical happens there. <laughs> like, like and and since, I'm, since I, I ride motorcycles a lot, I found an app called Rideshare, and I actually rented a Harley on one of those trips and just rode around the beaches on a Harley. So that was, like, just fantastic. Like, that doesn't get any better than that. Oh, my gosh. For, for, for me. Yeah, yeah, so great. What's the name the of the same, app? It was, actually, it was actually cheaper than running a car, running so this Harley. So great. How fun. I love that. What's the name of the app? Uh, Rider Share. It's, it's not an app. It's a website. It's called Rider Share. Nice. They do require a pretty hefty uh, security deposit. Yeah, I'm sure. But you get it, you get it, you get it back when you return the bike. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. We'll make sure you can bring you, your bike When back. you return the bike unharmed, <laughs> right? give it back to you. Yeah, that's good. That's fun, though. What a great idea. Yeah, I just think it's important to, you know, to take advantage of, of the fact that we're out here in 48 states, a lot of us. You know, or if you're regional, you know, you're out, you're out there in, especially if you're out in these western states out here, there's just so much to do. There's there's no reason to sit in a truck stop. And, you know, I understand sometimes you have to do laundry or whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, there's no reason to to just sit there and wait to go back to work. Take yeah. advantage of it. Get out there and, and see something, do something, have experiences, connect with people. Yeah. And I think with just a little bit, a little bit more effort, you could find things to do that don't cost money. So there's, there's so Absolutely. many options. So you just have to be a little bit more creative. And honestly, that's the reason why I created the website. I, ELOTR.com. I really just wanted to have a place where drivers could share and just go, Hey, if you're in Oregon, you know, look and see what's on there and see who's posted. And you could just click on, maybe you won't want to go do that. You know, maybe that wouldn't, didn't sound like a thrill to you, you know, but maybe it is. And maybe, you know, you go, Oh yeah, I, I can't stop for the night. You know, but I can, I definitely can spend my break there and it's going to work yeah. out, you know? So it's just an easy way for us to share ideas. And, um, you know, cause we don't, we always stumble, just stumble on those places and, you know, it's just a way for us to all share so we could, you know, just enjoy it while we're out there. We can with little, with very little effort. <laughs> I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I think it's, it's a great resource if people use it and know about it. I hope they do. You know, uh, I'm compiling lists of just places to park cheap places to rent cars, you know, cheaper places or more expensive places to get Ubers or just little things to watch out for, you know, little roadside things. There's so many places that I saw on my van trips that I know about now that I'm like, oh, I can get my truck in there. Yeah, nice. You know, places all over Montana and in the mountains and by the beaches and the oceans and the, on the West Coast and just stuff that stuff that you might not think of. Yeah. So I think it's a great I think it's a great platform. It's a great thing you're doing. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. The website is elotr.com. It stands for Enjoying Life Over the Road. Okay, tell me about your um, National Parks Pass. How much does that cost a year, and then what do you get from that? What? Tell me about that in case somebody wants to. Yeah, there's uh, – I get the – it's called the America the Beautiful Pass, and it's $80 for the year, and it goes from – it's 12 months from when you buy it. So okay. it's not like a January to yeah. December thing. It's, it's 12 months. Uh, it's $80, and that gets you into any national park in the country, which is a great value because if you go into uh, Yosemite or Yellowstone or Glacier National Park or something like that, they can be 30 to $40 Yeah, I was going to say, like 30 bucks, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I, I went from uh, – if you go from Yellowstone down to the Grand Tetons, that's two of them. And yeah. if you come back, you have to pay again if you come oh. back through Yellowstone. So yeah, that's sixty or eighty bucks right there. So yeah, yeah, that's a good that's good money. Yeah, absolutely worth it. And like you know, that one time I was in New Mexico at, at White Sands, I just I didn't even know that was there, and I just happened to have it in my wallet, and bam, you know, it just get in for free. 
Well, what I love about that too, the pass is like it'll let you, it'll allow you the choice to make a, a short trip there. Whereas if you were going to pay thirty dollars and you're only going to be there thirty minutes, nobody's going to do that. You know, we weren't going to pay for that. But when you have the pass, it's like why not right. go have lunch at the park? You know. Yeah, if I had to pay to get into White Sands and I had the taxi guy bring me in there, I might not have. Yeah, it's just another obstacle to eliminate. Yeah, but if you buy it, and yeah, it's 80 bucks, but if you buy it once, it's good for the whole year. Yeah. You can get into any park in the whole country, especially if you're someone who's out in the western states where the majority of the parks are. Right. It's just such a great tool to have in your pocket. Yeah, I love it. Great idea. And what about the parking there? Just generally speaking, would you say typically that the parks, you have to park the truck at a truck stop and then drive in? Or what could people expect that are wanting to maybe venture out and to see the national parks for the first time in their, their truck driver? You know, they're on the road full time, so, you know, they're always going to have to deal with the truck. So what could they expect to have to deal with when they're trying to venture out for the first time maybe? Yeah, they're all going to be different. White okay. Sands is the only one that actually had a big enough place out, right outside the park. Like, I could have just walked in there. Yeah. But it's such a big park. I didn't, you know, you really need a, at least a bike. If you had a bicycle, you could have parked right there and just ride your bike in there. Yeah. Most of them, honestly, I can't think of any that you could you can park at. So yeah. All, yeah. I would say almost all of them, you're going to need to park at a truck stop or yeah. find some kind of truck truck parking nearby and rent a car. Yeah, yeah. But so worth it, like though. I said, some, mm. some of these places, like Salt Lake City is such a great place to rent cars. I My last reset, when I went down, I, I got that van uh, for two days for $42. Wow, total. crazy. Yeah, um, that's crazy. You know, and, the, and the Uber to the place was $8. So wow. an Uber there, an Uber back, that's 16 bucks, $42 for the rental car. Yeah, you have to pay for gas, which is crazy right now. But Yeah. So um, worth it, though. What a great you know, weekend. You, 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 if you had to pay for an air uh, airfare to get to Salt Lake or wherever to go to some of those national parks and then pay again for the national parks, you know, it would cost you several hundred dollars or, or a couple thousand bucks maybe to go on a vacation like that. But we're paid to go to these places. Yeah, yeah. It's a very so minimal if, if cost. You, if you have to pay 40 to 60 bucks for a rental car and a few bucks for an Uber, I mean, you're almost getting a free vacation out of it. So yeah. why not? yeah. You know, and I always think, you know, we don't have to, you know, we're all about making money out on the road. You know, and like you said, everybody has their own financial situation, so it's different for everybody. But, you know, so maybe you're not going to make a trip like this every month or, you know, maybe once every six months or, you know, but still you can you can do it at some time, you know, and just being on the lookout while you're traveling for different options. And um, like you said, very low cost vacation. It's so refreshing, right? I mean, you leave that time going, man, that was great, you know. So good. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, good. And, and you can get so far out from, you know, where you park. Like I I did one in, in Seattle area one time and went all the way to Mount Rainier National Park. And when you're up in the mountains, I mean, you feel like you're in the Swiss Alps up there. Wow. And you're just out for a couple of days. But it is so refreshing when you go back to work, you feel like you've had a proper vacation sometimes. Yeah, so good. I'm usually exhausted by the time I go back to work because I'm just, when my feet hit the ground, I don't stop. <laughs> I yeah. just, I go all the time. I but tell. That's because I have to see things. I have, I have to see everything. Yeah, so great. Okay, so tell us how drive, if anybody wanted to reach out to you or wanted to get connected on you, are you on social or anything? How would people reach out to you? Yep, uh, on social media, I go by Andres Jose. Okay. Even though I'm not Spanish or Latino. Okay. But uh, that's, my name is Andrew <laughs> Joseph, so that's what I go by. Okay, love um, it. <laughs> on social media. So on Instagram, it's the Andres Jose. Okay. With underscores, but uh, it's the underscore Andres underscore Jose. Nice. And on Facebook, I'm just Andres Jose. Okay, good. I'll put that in the show notes so people can reach out. And then, I, you know, you said you'll get on ELOTR.com and you'll sign up. And when you um, get signed up there and give me your username and I'll put that on um, the show notes as well so people will be able to look at all your yeah, great absolutely. photography. I will love to uh, contribute and add some of my uh, photography to that. Yeah, sure. your pictures. Even just looking at your through your pictures this morning, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this guy's living the life." I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try. You have yeah. to. Yeah, it's so good. You only you only have one go around on this planet, so so good. Try to make the most of it. 
Well, anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Uh, that's it. You know, if I can just inspire one person, uh, I, I've been so inspired by other people's stories. That's my favorite type of content to consume when I'm on YouTube or whatever is watching inspirational stories and people that, you know, uh, so many of the things that I do in life have been, have come from other people inspiring me. So if I can get back and inspire somebody to even just think differently and, Hey, I can do that and, yeah. and make a change in their life. Then, then it's all good. That's so what great. I'm all about. Well, Andy, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show. It was a pleasure meeting you. And I know I'm going to have to have you on again because you're just doing so much great stuff out there. <laughs> I'm going to have to go get some more content for you. Though. I know. Do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thanks Thank so much. You, so you be much. safe out there. It. Be safe out there. Enjoy your journey. Thank you so much. The website is el. OTR.com stands for enjoying life over the road. So go check it out. ELOTR.com. Andy's posted a lot of his pictures on there. You're going to love seeing his photography. It's truly breathtaking. He has a beautiful um, eye for photography, so it almost makes you feel like you were there. Makes you wish you were for sure. <laughs> anyway, check it out. You might also want to post some of your favorite places to stop. Anyway, I hope you're doing, I hope you're enjoying the journey as much as we are and um, look forward to connecting with you on the website. Again, that's ELOTR.com. Y'all be safe out there and by all means, enjoy the journey. Enjoying Life Over the Road, a community that champions adventure, innovation, and well-being.